Hi, this is Worth Godwin of WorthGodwin.com, bringing you a little plain English simplicity for this complex modern world. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about how to back your computer up. Now, I'm not going to go into any real explanation of why you need to back your computer up. Just suffice to say, it is extremely important, and I would say that it is arguably the single biggest mistake that I see people making which is not backing their computer up or failing to do it on a regular basis or doing it in the right way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit here. I, I'm trying to kind of keep this mess, this video to about 10 minutes long. I have to keep it to about that. So I'm going to go a little faster than I usually do. Uh, normally I like to take my time going through the lessons and explain things maybe even two or three different ways because I found that not everybody learns the same way. And so some people understand it better one way versus another. Now, some people who are perhaps a little more advanced computer users tend to find this, they get a little impatient sometimes with that, but I think it's really important for people, for me to explain it properly and take my time because I think most people rush through the lessons a little too much for, mo for the basic computer users. And those are the people, of course, who I need to help the most. Right. Let's go through this kind of quickly and I'm just gonna give you the basic concepts and some specific recommendations. What I'm going to do first here is I'm going to explain two broad general types of uh, general methods of backing your computer up. And then I'm going to go into a couple specific recommendations as to programs and methods that you can use to achieve this. And I'm going to go into specifics as to what you should do if you have a Windows computer and what you should do if you have a, one of Apple's Macintosh computers. So I'm going to be covering both types of computer. But first, let's talk about the, the broad concepts here and the method the overall uh, two methods that you could take to come back in your computer up, both of which have benefits to you. So the first method we're gonna talk about is versioned backup or uh, incremental backup as it's also known. Now, the idea behind this is that when you back up, you are going to back up either back everything up and you back it up each time, everything up each time and you put it onto a different disk or a uh, different storage place, storage media each time so that you're creating an entirely complete copy of each set of files each time. And so you have different versions to go back through. Alternatively, you can just back up the new or changed files each time. Either one of those, as long as you keep multiple copies that sort of go back through history of your backups, those would generally count as versioned or incremental backups. Now you can do this manually by, for example, burning a disk, um, a blank CD or a blank DVD or a Blu-ray disk or what have you. Or you can use a program to do this, this for you. Okay, And so again, version backups, they, ben they give you multiple uh, backups. They give you redundancy and that gives you uh, more security and peace of mind because if one of those backup turns out to be bad, if one copy goes bad, you have other copies and that redundancy protects you better. Okay. Additionally, let's imagine, let's say we have a Word document. Um, just hypothetically, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about, say, it's a, a novel you're writing. Okay. Now, you may not be a writer, but just you can use the same general concept to apply to whatever you do on the computer. But you've written this book and you're writing it in stages obviously you're not writing it all in one day so over time you keep adding to the book but chances are you probably at some point you go back and you make some changes to something you've already written you're not just adding to it you're making revisions right you're making changes same thing might apply if you're talking about uh, any other kind of long-term project so let's say on day five you've been backing up every day and on day five you realize you know I made a change yesterday that was, it's actually not nearly as good as what I had the day before that. Well, with the version backups or incremental backups, you can go back to not just the most recent backup, but the one before that or the one before that to get the best copy of the file that you need and then sort of bring it forward in time, so to speak, to the present day and allow you to, to work with it again. So that's basically the benefit of a versioned or incremental backup. And again, I'll go into specifics as to programs that you can use that will automate this process for you and allow you to back your computer up properly in a minute or two here, okay? So let's talk about the other method of backing up. That is called cloning. 
Now, some people might argue that cloning isn't really a way to back your computer up. It's really supposed to be for moving to a new hard drive, for example, when you're upgrading to a new, uh, larger hard drive, for example. And yes, it is used that way. And arguably, it's actually used more often that way than it is for backing up. But personally, I use cloning as my main backup method. Now, I have a way that I'll get to in a minute, which I clone and have cloned and versioned backups at the same time or incremental, sort of combined the best of both worlds. The clone is, it's just like the name says or, or suggests, it is an exact copy of your hard drive. So that means not only are you copying your own personal files, maybe uh, email or your address book or your photographs and so forth, it's also copying all of the operating system files that are needed for the computer to run. So that would be Windows XP's files or Windows 7's files, or maybe Mac OS X uh, Tiger or Snow Leopard or what have you. All of those files, as well as all the specific settings and all those little tweaks and adjustments to how you have it set up that customized it to make it uh, work exactly the way you want it to, all of those things get copied as well. And so even down to something as, as mundane and, and, and small a detail as like the placement of an icon on your desktop, all of that gets preserved exactly when you clone your drive. And so what happens is if your main hard drive goes bad, uh, it could be maybe because of a virus infection or because the thing physically goes bad, you have the potential, and this is not always gonna work for every computer, but in many cases you can start the computer up from the other hard drive and what I would recommend is that you back you clone to an external hard drive that you leave turned off most of the time except when you're doing the backup because that way it reduces the potential of wear and tear and the potential of it uh, it makes it more reliable in other words so in many cases you can actually start the computer up from that external hard drive and literally be up and running within two or three minutes if something goes wrong in the main computer and then either on your own or with the help of a technician, you can retrieve newer files that you may not have had a chance to back up yet before the main hard drive completely fails. So it sort of lets you get into a position where you can access the files on the failing hard drive and grab them, which you can't do as easily if you're started up from that drive that's failing because it keeps getting worse and worse. So uh, alternatively, in some cases, you may not be able to start off from that external drive, but usually you or a technician, usually it's probably best to do that, have a technician do this, can take the drive out of that external case and put it into the computer. And this can take as little as three to five minutes. And again, you're right up and running again and it, everything's exactly the way it was. So those are the two things. You have your incremental backups and you have your cloning backups. So what are my recommendations for specific programs that will help you achieve this, okay? Well, let's start with Windows. I'm gonna to get to the Apple's Mac computers and the recommendations I have for them in just a minute, but we'll start with Windows. So on Windows, you have a built-in software. The built-in backup software will allow you to do incremental backups. However, I think it's kind of confusing uh, for most people and kind of hard to set up. So what I recommend doing is, it's very inexpensive. It's a one-time charge, it's not a subscription or anything. I would recommend getting a program that I found called Oops Backup. It's kind of a goofy name, but it's Oops, O-O-P-S, exclamation mark, backup, all one word. And you can Google that, and it is a program that costs, uh, when I checked most recently, it was $39, which is a very reasonable fee. And it is very simple. It literally just walks you through a process and you just click a few things, answer a couple questions, usually just hit the next button really. And it just goes with the main settings that it goes with and suggests for you are usually the ones that will work fine. And it allows you to make automatic incremental backups and you can do it to um, an external hard drive or to a USB flash drive or what have you, okay? So that's how you would, I would recommend doing version backups. Now for cloning backups on the Windows side, you have a couple of options. They're both free, but there's a couple little caveats on them, okay? So the first thing is something called XX Clone, and you can Google that, XX Clone, one word, and that is a free program, but it only works with Windows XP. There's another program called Seagate Disk Wizard, which you can use on any version of Windows from XP on, and 
it is also free but it does require that you have at least one of the drives either the main drive or your backup drive has to be either made by Seagate or made by Mac store which are actually owned by the same company and so as long as you have one of those drive types you're going to be fine and they're, they're one of the more common manufacturers of hard drives so chances are there's a pretty good chance you already have a Mac store or Seagate drive in your computer and certainly if you go and buy an external drive to back up to just make sure you buy Seagate or Mac store and you're going to be fine. Now on the Mac side of things what I recommend is uh, there's a couple options version backups you can do very very easily with a program called Time Machine that is built into the Mac software if you plug in an external hard drive it pretty much will automatically pop up a window and say would you like to use this for Time Machine and you hit yes and you're done and it just backs everything up pretty much automatically and it allows you to, to go back in time hence it's called Time Machine uh, and pick out old copies and bring them forward and so forth just all the benefits that I just talked about for versioned or incremental backups now what I actually prefer is something called carbon copy cloner this is also a 100 percent free program and it allows you to uh, set up a drive and you can say this is your main drive the source drive and this is your target drive and it will copy everything and it will clone the drive so you can start your Mac up from that external drive Firewire or USB uh, either one is fine for most Macs and you can start the computer up so you're literally a minute or two later you can be up and running again if something goes wrong with your main drive now the cool thing about carbon copy cloner and this is the program I use for myself and I use it every day is it actually allows you to do version backups as well as cloning it kind of does the best of both worlds so it, the first time it'll clone it takes a couple hours maybe but then after that it only takes maybe five minutes because it only adds copies of things that have changed or that are new and so you get kind of the benefits of both types so hopefully that made sense again I know I kind of went through things very quickly and I covered a lot of stuff but I was trying to keep the lesson short and focused on that just basically answer the question that people have about how to back your computer up again if you need more help and step-by-step -step instructions take a look at my video lesson CDs where in the Windows basics and the Mac basics I actually cover how to use programs like this and how to back up and I show you step-by-step -step. I also go into far more detail uh, on why to back up how to back up and so forth and help you understand everything in my how to avoid seven common and costly computer mistakes which is available as an ebook via Kindle and Amazon's I uh, excuse me uh, Apple's iBooks store and it's also available as an audio which you can get through iTunes you can get through Amazon or you can go to my website and get there and uh, you can listen and get a full understanding it actually covers three full hours broken into smaller segments so this is Worth Godwin of WorthGodwin.com. Again, wanting to wish you a little plain English simplicity for this complex modern world. And I hope you have a great day. And remember, back your files up. You really will regret it if you don't. And you will be very happy you did once something happens, which is almost inevitable at some point to happen. So, again, Worth Godwin, WorthGodwin.com. Have a great day.